Hello folks, today we're going to be looking at Solid Edge ST6 simulation. To be more specific, we're actually going to be talking about some of the new heat thermal loads that we can apply to our geometry. Alright, so what we have here in this situation is a brake rotor and some brake hardware. And we're going to be testing the rotor to see what type of temperature we can, we're going to achieve as a 5,000 pound semi rolls down a hill with a constant braking load. Alright, so we're going to actually go ahead and turn off some of these parts. We just need the actual rotor for the very first part of the simulation. So let's go ahead and just turn that on by itself. Alright, so let's go ahead and create a new simulation. Let me go ahead and get our simulation bar up and lock it down. We're going to create a new simulation. Uh, what we have here is the ability to create a steady state heat transfer. And as you can see, the last two options is creating a buckling and a, a structural load while we're actually creating heat loads on the piece of geometry. Uh, we already have a study created, but we're going to go ahead and show that in the, here in the shortly. Uh, first thing we're going to do is just going to do the uh, steady state heat transfer to see what type of temperatures we're going to achieve on this part. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and define our geometry. We're going to go ahead and use the rotor itself. And let's go ahead and say heat flux. All right, so what the heat flux is going to allow me to do is place a heat load on these two surfaces of the disk. Uh, we also have heat generation, which is the same as heat flux, but it's going to apply the heat to the entire part. We just want to do it to a face, so we're going to go ahead and use the heat flux. So we're going to say this face and this face are the two faces we're going to apply the loads to. So we're going to say 1200 watts is going to be applied to these two faces. And of course this heat is going to dissipate throughout the part, uh, so we're going to apply a convection load to go ahead and tell it the geometry that the heat is going to be migrating through. All right, let's go ahead and window the entire piece of geometry. And, of course, we need to deselect the two faces that the actual heat load is actually being applied to. Oops, I did not select the other side. So let me go right back into there. And let me rotate this around. And let's say this face and the other face are the two faces that are going to be not having a load. Uh, we're going to go apply a film coefficient of 50 which is the variation of temperature on the part between and uh, the actual ambient temperature surrounding it, which is the ambient temperature is going to be 20, which is around uh, 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's go ahead and accept that. Let's take a look at our study that we just created here. Uh, you know, let's go ahead and turn the loads off so we can actually not have to see our little arrows on here. Uh, now the last thing to do is simply solve. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and solve and mesh it at the same time. So what we're doing is actually using the NAS Terran Solver, which is the NASA analysis uh, tool that's used since the early 60s. It's, a, it's owned by Siemens, and it's an uh, industry standard tool uh, specifically used for FEA. All right, so we're almost done with the study, and what we're going to do is actually see what type of temperature we're going to reach. All right, our threshold was 200 degrees Celsius. Uh, and as you can see on our on our right side of our menu, uh, we're actually topped out at 207 in certain areas. Uh, the white obviously is the hottest part. So we can actually see what certain areas and what temperature they're going to be by using a probe tool. Uh, by quickly just go ahead and let's move this out of the way and picking some areas. Uh, obviously the outside disc where the actual temperature is going to be applied is probably going to be the hottest. And of course obviously the inside where the hub bolts to the, or excuse me, with the, the rotor bolts to the hub is probably going to be the lowest value, which is kind of what we want. Uh, we also have some tools called ISO curves. Uh, these are kind of nice for our thermal load, so I'm going to turn this on. So we're turning ISO contour on, and you can see we actually have a heat variation on the right side here. Uh, we can actually go ahead and use the dynamic ISO curve. So we can see at certain areas, we have a little slider bar to drag in and out where, what, and let's see, we need to know about 130, and that is that area right there. And let's say that's the, the actual finite value for the uh, temperature that we cannot get into the actual hub hat area. Uh, so we're outside of that area, so you know what, we're, we're pretty good there. Uh, but again, we are over our threshold of 200 degrees Celsius. So a couple things we can do here. Uh, let's go ahead and close our simulation reports. All right, so the first thing we can do is actually open up some surface area for some more heat dissipation. Uh, so let's let's go ahead and do that. We're in the assembly, uh, but that means we can still go ahead and make changes to our geometry. We are in synchronous. 
Uh, so that allows me to go ahead and, oops, didn't mean to grab that face. I want to grab this face right here. And you know what? Let's go ahead and give it some more airflow. Uh, so we're going to take that face and push it in. So as it's catching up, we're going to go ahead and say, you know what? Let's go ahead and move that in 12 millimeters. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and make another change to it. Uh, I'm going to just drag my steering wheel. This is what this little tool is called. I'm going to grab the torus on the outside of the steering wheel. And this allows me to add some angle to that face. So let's go ahead and say, let's move that out to negative 12 degrees. All right, good enough. And of course, since we've taken some of the, the strength out of it, let's add some of that strength back. Let's, by, let's do it by actually taking that inside face uh, of, those, of the disc, and there's a dimension on here. And let's say we're going to add a millimeter to each side. All right, so let's go ahead and say this is 8.75. There we go. So we thickened it up. Perfect. All right. So the last thing we need to do is, with, instead of having to reapply all the loads to it, all I got to do is say resolve. All right. So it's a huge time saver not having to recreate every single time uh, your analysis. Uh, so this is going to go through a lot quicker the second time. So let's see what type of temperatures we actually hit this time. We are almost done. Here's the processing results. And immediately I see on the right side that uh, we are under, actually at 197, so we're under our 200 degree threshold. Uh, so we're good there. All right, a uh, couple other things uh, we can actually look at here. Uh, I also mentioned um, the ISO curves. We also, uh, again, have the ability to create reports. Uh, so after I take a look at uh, what, what, what we achieved here, uh, let's uh, go ahead and send this to a customer. We can go ahead and create a simulation. Uh, we can do it with a web page or a Word document. I just run it through a web page right now. It'll create an HTML document. All right, so here is our study that we just created and, you know, all our forces and loads and materials. And, of course, uh, it takes snapshots of all the results of our pictures. So there's our temperature gradation. Uh, and, of course, we can zoom that up make it a little bigger. And so that is our report. All right. I uh, also mentioned earlier that we do have the ability to do two types of loads at one time. So let me go ahead and close our simulation report. And let's go to our second uh, simulation that I had a while ago, which was this one. I'm not going to go and actually solve it again because it takes a few minutes to, uh, I don't want it to have to recalculate and remesh that and resolve that. So, you know what, let's look at the re original results that we had for this. All right, so as I turn that on, you notice it turns on a couple parts here. Of course, we have the rotor, which is what we looked at a while ago. And, of course, we actually have the hub on the inside that the rotor is bolted to. And we actually created a bolted connection. So we can actually have that actually as a force applied to it. All right, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at some of the results here. Uh, again, we can uh, take a look at temperature. Of course, we this case, we actually have a stress. So we can actually take a look at the stress. Let's look at the actual actualized instead of the uh, exaggerated example. Uh, so let's go ahead again. Let's do a probe tool on some of this high stress area here. And we're looking at 198 megapascals. Uh, so, you know, I don't, I don't remember what the actual load uh, tolerance here. Uh, but uh, that is the ability to create a stress and a temperature load at the same time. Uh, of course, again, we can create a report on both of these. Let's go ahead and create the report anyway, saying it's out of date. All right, so this time on our in a report, we're going to actually have a loads and our temperature, material properties, and uh, all our other good stuff in here. So here is our temperature loads and, of course, the uh, uh, displacement and the stress values. Go ahead and close that out. All right. Thank you all, folks, for taking the time to look at uh, some of the new stuff we have in our analysis tools and in, in, in simulation. Uh, if you all have any questions, feel, feel free to contact us at Swoosh Technologies and we'd be more than happy to help you and answer any questions that you have. Uh, thank you very much.